The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. Tonight on The South Today, protesters campaign outside the Gore District Council offices against a controversial reappointment. A female dairy farmer from North Otago is $10,000 richer after winning a new rural competition. And a giant creature is now guarding the entrance to Clyde, made out of local fence posts. Kia ora, I'm Dave Gooselink. Protesters took to the doorstep of the Gore District Council this week, raising concerns over the reappointment of outgoing CEO Stephen Parry. The group started a petition to seek his immediate removal as the future of the position hangs in the balance. The wet weather wasn't stopping these protesters from voicing their message outside the Gore District Council this week. More than a dozen residents gathered outside the council building on Monday. Their protest was against the council's plans to reappoint departing CEO Stephen Perry as its interim chief executive, after failing to find a suitable replacement candidate. The Gore District Citizen Action Group staged their protest just half an hour before a council meeting, where councillors were due to discuss the role. They would rather Mr Perry wasn't in the picture. Past behaviour and clashes with the public, I would say. Perry previously resigned as Gore Council CEO in September and had been due to finish up at the end of this month. Protester Jack McIntyre was able to meet with acting mayor Keith Hovell to discuss the group's concerns, but was left disappointed to learn that Perry would likely be appointed anyway. They never get an answer out of the council in regard to anything like this. That's as simple and basic as I can make it. The action group says they'll continue seeking support and signatures for their paper-based petition, which they plan to present to council at the end of the month. In Gore, the South Today. With summer on the horizon, preparations are underway to try and help ease pressure on Dunedin's public transport system when cruise ships are in town. The Otago Regional Council is adding 300 extra bus trips between Port Chalmers and Dunedin over the upcoming season to accommodate the extra visitors in the city. The council says it will encourage cruise passengers to take the private designated shuttles into the city centre, but admits many opt for the cheaper public transport instead. Port Otago has bookings for 129 cruise ship visits this summer season. That's an increase of more than 20 ships compared to last season. A train service between Dunedin and Port Chalmers will also assist in bringing some passengers into the city under an arrangement between Kiwi Rail and Dunedin Railways. The cruise ship season is set to launch in early November with the arrival of the Royal Princess. Well, one North Otago dairy farmer is $10,000 richer after being named as the first Otago Daily Times Rural Life Year of the Farmer winner. Mafanway Alexander's hard work on the farm has paid off, demonstrating resilience in the dairy industry while juggling bringing up two daughters. Working in the cow sheds just another day at the office for Mafamwe Alexander. She's the winner of the 2023 Otago Daily Times Rural Life Year of the Farmer initiative, which aimed to celebrate some of the South Island's food and fibre producing champions. Alexander was one of five finalists from across Otago and Southland and chosen as the overall winner by a panel of five judges. The honour and prize pack valued at $10,000 coming as a shock. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh wow, holy heck, really? The Welsh-born contract milker works on a thousand cow farm near Duntroon in North Otago, where she lives with her two teenage daughters. She also leads a number of rural organisations. Her nominator describing Alexander as the embodiment of what the farming industry should be. I actually don't really have words. This is a momentous occasion, I don't have words. Um, 
Wow, thank you guys so, so much. I'm blown away. The other entrants were doing far more than I was, but I'm really appreciative of the acknowledgement. The inaugural awards has proven popular across the rural community and will be back for its second year in 2024 in Duntroon, in the South today. Well, Eastern Southland took a step back in time over the long weekend with a parade of vintage cars taking to the streets. Vauxhall vehicle owners held their national rally in Gore, celebrating a slice of New Zealand automotive history. Looking like they're rolling straight out of the 1920s. 64 Vauxhall car enthusiasts gathered in Gore over the long Labour weekend for the 40th annual National Rally. 36 classic cars were on display at the Croydon Aviation Heritage Centre at Mandeville, including Vauxhall models from as early as 1924 through to as late as 1978. Well, everybody enjoys them. We go on car runs, monthly runs, stuff like that. We meet people and become lifetime friends, make lifetime friends, whether it's New Zealand, Australia or around the world. Graham Saxton is president of the Otago Vauxhall Owners Club. He says the cars were very popular back in the day before being discontinued here in the 1980s. Yes, they stopped making that for us in New Zealand about 50 to 60 years ago now. So we struggle for parts, but we keep in touch with other clubs and we help each other out with parts, etc. So now it's good. The annual rally alternates between the North and South Island, enthusiasts enjoying the chance to catch up with friends and others with like minds. In Gore, the South today. Love is still running strong for one elderly Tairi couple who are celebrating more than 60 years since making their vows and tying the knot. 86-year-old Darby Jill reckons he hasn't been able to leave his wife Eve Jenkins' side since they first met way back in 1958. The couple have stuck together throughout the years and this week was celebrating their 65th wedding anniversary at their Mosgiel home. The pair believe the secret to a good marriage is to always listen to one another and to constantly look after each other. Both still remember the time they met each other at the St Kilda Community Hall. Darby approaching Eve from across the dance floor. I said to my mate, well you have the skinny one and I'll have the fat one. <laughs> We ended up with a fat one. <laughs> that kind of banter sparked a whirlwind relationship. The couple getting married the same year at St. Martin's Anglican Church in Northeast Valley. And while this week is about remembering some of the precious memories they've shared, Darby and Eve are hoping to remain at each other's side for many more years to come. In Mosgiel, the South Today. Well, people travelling through central Otago may do a double take as they approach Clyde with a giant bird of prey now guarding the entry of the town. The giant falcons made out of recycled steel. It's a project that's been in the works for 10 years. A bird of prey in flight immortalised in recycled steel. The entrance to Clyde has a new guardian as a giant five metre tall statue of a native New Zealand falcon was unveiled on Saturday. The Kārere sculpture was created by Glenorchy-based artist Dan Kelly, who spent three months making the piece out of old fence posts from Central Otago Farms. It's an example of one of our beautiful native birds that we love and respect. Um, I do our native birds as a main subject. Naitahu and Manafenua representatives performed the karakia at the unveiling event, blessing the metal bird of prey in front of more than 150 onlookers. Community group Historic Clyde fundraised $74,000 for the project over the past three years, the idea taking a decade to come to fruition. I'm so proud to be part of a really neat team that um, we all had our input and yes, I was probably a bit of a pest at times. <laughs> Historic Clyde Carrere project manager Mani Kelly says seeing the sculpture unveiled was a special moment as the community group looks towards their next project in the pipeline. In Clyde, the South Today. If I Akine still to come on the South Today, two weeks late, why Central Otago's just celebrated Fiji Independence Day. And a national champion gives a group of young players a few lessons in Patonk. Here at 
Age Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Such a sweet girl. What are you dreaming about? This music. The Power of Dreams by Honda. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Welcome back. Well, culture and community was celebrated in Central Otago over the long weekend as the region's Fiji and families gathered to mark Fiji Independence Day. Well, that was officially marked almost a fortnight ago, but that didn't stop celebrations more than 3,000 kilometres away from the tropics. A taste of island paradise in the middle of central Otago. Delayed celebrations for Fijian Independence Day were in full swing in Cromwell on Saturday with traditional dancing, song and food. Fijian families, friends and workers gathered at the Cromwell Sports Club to celebrate the occasion, travelling to the event from around the South Island. We have um, families that come from Cromwell, we have families that come from Alexandra, Roxburgh, Wanaka, um, Queenstown and um, also we have some families that comes all the way from Invercargill in Christchurch. Fiji Independence Day was actually marked on October the 10th but central celebrations were postponed to fit in with everyone's schedules. Competitors young and old faced off in three-legged races and ball games with traditional coconut shucking also entertaining onlookers. Just keeping our um, culture alive you know, just knowing who we are as a Fijian, um, just knowing your identity as a proud Fijian. So yeah, it's pretty important, especially for your younger generation. Dione Naivalavia was part of the organising group and says the community was grateful for the opportunity to celebrate the special day in their home away from home. In Cromwell, the South today. A group of young people have been trying out the game of Patonk in central Otago and getting lessons on throwing down a challenge from a New Zealand champion. Students from Dunstan High School headed to the Alexandra Patonk Club on Friday to learn some basic skills from local experts. Alexandra's Marilyn Bunce is the highest ranked female Patonk player in New Zealand and ranks third overall in the sport nationally. She was happy to offer some tips and tricks to these Year 10 students as part of an NCEA physical education project to try new sports. Bunt says people of all ages can play Patonk, but the young group quickly realised that throwing hard and fast won't guarantee success in the sport. Club captain Bunny Hamilton was also keen to scout some fresh talent to establish a youth league side in Alexandra 
with the aim of competing against a very strong team in Dunedin. The pupils will be diving into their next sport experience as part of their PE project as they make a splash in swimming. In Alexandra, the South Today. Now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Controversy continues at the Gore District Council with protests against the reappointment of CEO Stephen Parry. Duntroon's Mifanwe Alexandra has won the first ODT Year of the Farmer Award, celebrating her efforts in the dairy industry. And Clyde has unveiled a giant Kararea sculpture. The native falcon now guards the entrance to the central Otago town. Now taking a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome Associate Editor Mike Houlihan. Welcome Mike. Good evening Dave. What's in the paper tomorrow? Uh, well we've got news of um, some new forestry uh, uh, commercial plantation uh, rules that the Otago Regional Council are planning on putting in place. Oh. Which city forests for one uh, are not best pleased with and they've uh, raised some objections to. Mm. Uh, we've got uh, some statistics about uh, the rise of population in the region, particularly in Queenstown which are quite startling if you're uh, trying to run a service centre in Queenstown. Nice. Um, we've got an update on Harry, the, uh, the homeless teenager who uh, was our headline story on Saturday. Mm. Uh, we've got an update from Hillside, uh, the rail workshop in South Eden, where there's been construction work going on apace. The good, art good. section has got an interview with the director of a new musical about to open in uh, Dunedin. Oh. And there's an extract from a new book in our sports section, which uh, has a chapter on Brendan McCullum, the favourite son of South Dunedin. Excellent guy. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Now taking a look at tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap the skin cancer detection specialists. And looking at the situation, they're forecasting some severe weather to arrive in the south tomorrow and Friday, with gales possible near the south coast tonight and low level snow expected across most of the region late tomorrow night. Heading to the top of the South Island and strong northwesterlies and showers and Nelson and 20, Greymouth heading for 18 with fresh northerlies and rain. Christchurch, brief rain, strong nor'westerlies, and still 23 degrees there. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, strong nor'westerlies and brief rain in Ashburton and Timaru, highs of 23 and 22 apiece. Ormaru gets southwesterly change and showers, a high of 18. Heading westwards to the Central Lakes and strong southwesterlies and showers for Wanaka and Queenstown tomorrow, both expecting highs of 15 degrees. Alexandra gets strong westerlies with showers later on and 16 degrees. Heading further south, and this is where it really gets a bit wintry, Belclutha and Gore. You should prepare for southwesterly gales and snow later on, although it will be 13 during the day. The Catlins also gets those gales along with wintry showers and 13. And down to the deep south, northwesterly gales and rain tonight in Invercargill. Becoming very cold during the day tomorrow, frequent showers with hail and sleet later on. Snow showers are possible tomorrow night, a high of 11 and a low of 0 degrees. And for fr a Friday, those wintry showers should clear slowly during the day, but hail and sleet are likely with bitterly cold southwesterly gales, a high of just 6 degrees. And finally heading to Dunedin, enjoy the mild northerly winds tonight with a few showers possible. Be mostly cloudy tomorrow, dry at first with some sunny periods, but cold southwesterlies develop during the afternoon with showers and possible thunderstorms. It will become very cold tomorrow night with wintry showers, hail and sleet likely, and a chance of snow on the higher hills for a, high, a low of one degree. That late wintry weather continues on Friday, hail and sleet at times, and a chance of snow on the hills. Showers clear later on, but it'll be very cold with strong to gale southwesterlies. The temperature gauge won't get above six degrees on Friday. 
Not looking forward to that one. But that's the news this Wednesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand or follow us on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite a popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists.